In today's episode, we are back modifying my 1995 Nissan GQ Patrol TD42. In the last episode, we started stripping down my new GU diffs for a complete rebuild of them. They got the four three centers, the twin Harrop E-lockers in there. We pulled the old diffs out of the GQ. We stripped all the suspension out so it was pretty bare underneath. We then gave it a freshen up with some Predator paint. And that catches us up to today's episode where we are installing a complete Hyperflex Secure Engineering Kit in the GQ, along with my new GU diffs. Let's jump into it. Proudly supported by Tread, Superior Engineering, and in part by. We've got a whole lot of suspension here. And there's the big freshly painted front, harped locked GU diff. And there's the rear one. So it's all freshly painted under here. It's all looking beautiful. Which gives us the whole blank canvas to start with. So there's nothing in here at the moment, as in all the suspension's out, all the diffs are out. It's just gonna be a rebuild from the start. And uh, big Nick's here to do it all for me. <laughs> Before we get too far into the video, summer is coming. So we've got some new hats in stock on the website, tylerthompson.com.au. We've got the bucket hats, Dad dumb, Dad's Dumb Decisions. We got the caps as well in Tyler Thompson. We have both in both styles. So if you want them, they're there now. Goes a long way to support the channel and what I do. What a mess. Someone needs to learn to wash their car. It's literally not New Year's of cake. Yeah, I miss that. I stuffed up. Was there something that came out of there? Yeah, that plate sits on top of it. Yeah, that's why. I was like, how did I miss all that? Well, yeah. So what's the plan to start with this suspension? Like, obviously, when you normally do suspension, it's a little bit different because you'd be pulling it out bit by bit with your diffs in and putting it back in. Most people don't buy every part under the cap on there. <laughs> yeah. Most people don't rebuild it from the start. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a bit different putting it back. So where are we going to start with because we've got nothing in the car? Well, I put drop boxes in. I'm probably going to pull these cool towers out and the bump stop. And then I put the resi mounts that Suppy give you up here. Yeah. Because, yeah, when you change the tower you have to put the shock in with the tower that's probably where i'm going to start yeah so front front shocks and shock towers so that's the old front shock towers out that's the new ones there the new ones being i'm pretty sure they're 30 mil higher so that just allows for more up travel in the shock so you can run them longer and they'll have that more uh, up travel going up and what they don't hit the bump stops. Yeah, it doesn't bottom the shock out. So, but because they're longer ones, it means that you normally have to hole saw in above so you can actually do them up. So that's gonna be the next exciting thing. So new shock towers there, they just bolt straight in, don't they? Old ones unbolt, they bolt in. Yep, and they supply the hardware and everything. Is that, is that good? Oh mate, you get free, free nice. Yeah. The washers. Fresh ones. Yeah. New shock towers bolted in, new bump stops bolted in. I might end up getting some freshies because those ones are broken. The bottom bit's missing off them. So that's why I had to put two spaces there to make up for that length. Now, the issue is, you can see, there's no room there. So once that shock goes in, you can't actually do it up. Which means in the engine bay here, you have to hole saw in a hole above that shock tower and that shock tower over there. And when we did this on the GU, it wasn't too bad. It was pretty much directed there. You just put a little hole saw, paint it up, patch it up, bolt your shock up, good to go. But with this, you got a heap of stuff in the way and that's not even the worst of it. Over this side, the fuel filter's directly above it and the fuel filter bolts into where we're going to drill out. So it means I have to relocate that fuel filter, I think. See, the, the thing is, like, I've gone big, long shocks for heaps of flex and travel when you're out four-wheel driving. You can just get a bit smaller shocks and you don't have all this drama. But because I just decided to do things the uh, crazy way, this is what happens. What are we going to do with this saw? Well, I don't know. What's your, what's your plan? Because that fuel filter won't go back there, will it? No. So what do you do with them? Well, early model ones fuel filters over there. Look, this is definitely gonna blow out. Big summer blowout. Woo -hoo. Look, I'm gonna get some food so I can work out my full potential. So these are the brackets for the remote res mounts. They just sit there, superior, give you all the brackets and all that stuff to sort of make this setup work. 
So yeah, bolt that on, and then you'll be able to sit the remote res there. So some things being moved out of the way there, and now we can cut a hole in that. Still trying to work out the other side. Can't see, they're so blue. <laughs> Painter up, bus protection. Brand new. Brand new, mate. Look at that. So Nick tried to leave one, two holes. Like that's kind of why it's cut like that. Because when I get the Patrol Doctor Air box that I'm thinking of getting, not 100% sure I'm going to get that yet. But that seems to be the most likely one. I like the look of their snorkel and air box. It bolts in one of those holes. So I've tried to leave them. Otherwise, we have nowhere to bolt the air. Box. How tight do you do them up? Because they got that big rubber, but you don't want to squish that rubber too much, do you? Oh, you do. You squish it good. That's the shocks in. Loosely mounted up there. Just sort of get them out of the way and then we'll tidy them all up once everything else is in. And then... Big radius arms are going in. So the drop boxes, they just they just move where the radius um, mounts. Well, they lower it. Yeah, okay. And what's the purpose of that? You get more cast. Flex is better too, because you smash the bush off. Oh. Use a like, hybrid style bush. Yeah, okay. Instead of being a pin through there and a mushroom bush, don't flex. Rex bushes all the time. No good. This here works well. Yeah. Flex as well. You got a GU plus fives, bro. Yeah, mate. That's GQ plus fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, you're correct. I know. I know my stuff. <laughs> you make a good one again. Ah, uh, John me. What am I doing, John me? Do something. Ah, oh, maybe out of line. <laughs> Started with the last one first. Oh, a little bit of mud, bro. Bit of. What do you want? Some shockies. Oh, you put it upside down, mate. Uh, mate, that's the same thing as on the GU. It's upside down. <laughs> See, mate, that, mate. Yeah. It's the small details. Small details. So, what? The shock mounts, uh, the arms mount, then the What was that? <laughs> what? So a different hole. What was that? Did you say something? No, so that'll hold the diff now. The shocks and arms will hold the diff up. Yeah. So what was the trick to getting those arms in in the end? You just had to roll the diff a bit. Yeah. yeah. I had to roll it. Oh, So what have I missed? I was putting axle seal in. Just banged it in. What's the secret to packing a CV? Pretty much same as Wilbaron. So I'd be good at it then? Yeah, you'd be pro. So I got this brace and you just sort of push it into the bearing. All the little balls in there, move them around. And you just keep doing it until she choppers. So you don't need a special tool or anything, you just keep ramming, them in, ramming it in with your hand? Yeah. So I already cleaned these last time after we pulled them apart. Well, with a bit of brake cleaner or something? Yeah. So now the diff is on and mounted, we can start rebuilding it. Uh, obviously it's got the locker and centre in it, but it doesn't have the axles and anything out from the diff really. So what have we got to do, Nick? Axles, swivel hubs, brakes, all of it. All of it. Yeah, so it's all got to be rebuilt back together on here. Look how good it looks though. It's going to be the best GQ in town. I'm going to hit these bearing races out so they can, we get new ones, switch all the races, switch everything, a lot. So I do all that, got the bearing kit, it's a terrain tamer one, got it from all 4x4 spares when they sent the diffs out. I got everything off them that we need and this contains everything to do both sides, bearings and swivel hubs. Whoa, what a catch. So just hammer those new races in. Tap them. No washer on this one. Better go find it. So at the moment, packing all the bearings. Do it all in one go. So I don't have to wash my hands three times. 
So just chuck them in the bearing packer and squish it down until they're full. I can do them by hand if you want, I'm pretty good at it. I want to be done before Christmas. <laughs> Full. So I'm just messaging this guy now about the rims. Go the Neg 38. That's what we came up with, wasn't it? Big bobs. <laughs> you can't, you can't be an Instagrammer and bloody YouTuber and not have some good wheels. Just can't do it. Well, should be legal. They'll still be good in Neg 12. No, nah, they'll be incomplete. You, you do you, but all the big dogs have good rims. <laughs> you know, if you want to get on their level, be the real best GQ in town. Oh yes, yeah, so you're just packing the wheel bearings at the same time here. Yeah. yeah, I'll just do all of them. They're packed. So yeah, inner, outer, kingpin. Just a couple done there. Chisel the old ones off, tap the new ones on. So a bit of force to get them out. Yeah. <coughs> so that's it. That's it, bang back on, 20 mil deep socket. You gotta make sure you put these on before you put the f***ing housing on me. In the right order. So what's the order? On these, metal, rubber, and then dusty like the back. You just tuck them over there. They can relax. So we well, just put a little bit of grease in on them? Yeah, well, <coughs> once they're, they're greased, that's all the grease they get for their life. Help out on grease. Oh, well, and then goes the spring. See the knuckle just slides back over? Yeah, 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 it does slide back over. And then the kingpins hold it on. Nice. So. These have shims, yeah, right? Yeah. And the shims are to set the preload on the kingpin bearing. Because if they're too tight, it'll be real stiff, they'll wear out. These are just the bearings when you turn, so they don't move fast like a wheel bearing, but they just move side to side. If you do them too loose, you can get death wobbles. Yeah. One of the main factors of patrol death wobbles, these things. Too loose. Too loose, too tight, either or other, but mostly too loose. Pretty sure the specs like three kilos of drag with no seals on it. I'll have to re-look it up. It's been a minute. So how do you set, is just how tight you do those bolts? You know like uh, fishing, like fishing, like where you catch a fish and then they weigh it with a scale, like a pull scale, it's a spring. Yeah. So you put that like on here, and then you pull it, and it should get to a certain amount of weight before it actually moves. Yeah, okay. That's the correct way to And how do you that. tension all those, just by how tight you do the bolts? No, no, these shims. So they do up tight to spec, so there's metal, a steel shim, that little piece of metal there, yeah. is the shim, so it's too loose. So how do you get them tighter or looser? You get more or less shims. Normally I really only need one on each, but it depends, it depends. So you can have two or three shims there? Yeah, if on. you need them, but you, you won't need that many. So normally just And you got to do that with these off, because they caught, create drag as well. So normally you just have one shim and it's fine, but you got to just double check it. Yeah. Can you run no shim? Well, when people normally get, they get loose when they get worn, people aren't doing pull shim out, throw them over their shoulder. <laughs> it's not the way to do it. Yeah. But it'll probably get you out of trouble for like five minutes. Yeah. I'll bang these on, the back, and these plates, hold them on. Yeah, oh yeah, so you got a place to hold and those. And after that, we got new stub axles. Oh yeah. Brand new ones. So I'll bang them on. This is just a full rebuild, hey? Yeah. Just everything. Yeah. Done. Yeah, it's better than your other car. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> <laughs> we do things like, one time, one time only. Better Andy, brand new something. She's shiny. Brand new something. Straight from Nissan. Can no, I get up? Oh yeah? No, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> not, in, not impressed though, but a no. couple of years out to a holiday and this stitch up came in the door. Look, I didn't I didn't put the two and two together that you got every single thing from the superior catalogue and that all you <laughs> Mate, you, I didn't think You helped me do the order. Yeah, but like, <laughs> You told just, me what to get. We could have just banged some shots and some uh, <laughs> Coils in it, and you could have done the rest and done the right, right. right. Would you look at this? Brand new. Brand new. Stop it. Oh, sorry. You're right. Uh, you listen to it. Oh, so, what way does this go? You know, you're doing a lot. Look at that. <laughs> Depends how good he is, depends how close he is to the original. So, 
new made in Fuji Japan spindle. Good quality. Normally these have a backing plate, which we're gonna leave that off because they get mud gets stuck in there and then you rub, like, get a big squeal and you wear your rotors out. No good. So we take it off for you for sure an extreme four-wheel driver. <laughs> yeah. Alright, these little things and this gap here is for a model with ABS. They normally have a sensor comes through. Oh yeah. But you don't have it. But other than this, swivel hub's completed. Yeah. So wheel bearings go on this. So like I'll grease this up and then we put the wheel bearings on like we did last time, put it on, tension it up, and that swivel hub's done. <laughs> so the adjustable upper arms is, is so this a get, run through? So you can get the correct pinion angle. Yeah, okay, so that's why you get adjustable uppers. Because otherwise when you lift it, like the pin the diff pinion will go on an angle. Yep. And then the pinion will sit weird. And your uni joints will fly over it and it'll vibrate and it'll carry on like a bloody two-stroke lawnmower second hand. <laughs> no, no good. That's that's a that's a quick rundown for you. And what what about the lowers? Well what they extend it a bit further back so you don't get as much uh Reasty. Reasty when you flex because the front diff tries to roll under the car. So they're to counteract the lift as well. And what are, what are they? GU fives, mate? Yeah. So what's that mean? Plus 15 GQ. Oh. So is that 15 mil? 15 mil, mate. Yeah. So just putting in all the arms down the back now, so yeah, lowers, which are a GU plus five, because what, GUs are 10 mil longer than GQs already, is that right? Arms, yeah, the arms. So you just get GU plus five, which give you plus 15, which will counteract um, where everything sits after the lift. So, you know, you do all this so it drives nice. Um, and you know, then when it comes to engineering and stuff, you can actually get it passed. And it also brings the wheel back a bit, otherwise, if you don't get them, they, like once you put bigger tyres on, they sit forward and they smash this guard. Um, and then the lowers are much stronger as well, because lowers are a common thing to smash to pieces off-road on a lot of four-wheel drives. I did it on my nav when I had the factory ones in. You're not going to be able to break these. And then adjustable uppers as well. Uh, this side is kinked to allow for a tank to go in there if I want to do that one day. And then the shocks are mounted from the top as well, so we've got all this dangling. That way when we bring the diff up, we can just bolt it all in to hold the diff. How's your kingpin bearings and everything else going down the front? Oh yeah, I, I need a shim for this one here. Was the shim, shim? the shim missing? Oh mate, it wasn't even on there. You probably threw it over your shoulder when you took it off. Oh, oh I'm not about that. And then panhard's in. So well, can we get a panhard explanation? What's why we got an upgraded panhard or adjustable one? So we can centralize the diffs under the vehicle. Yeah, so once you put a lift in, like, it goes one way. If it's a fixed length, yeah. So that'll allow you to adjust it, uh, which we'll have to do after. Don't bump that. Yeah? Don't right. bump it. It'll fall off. I'll be pissed off. So don't do it. Okay. I won't. Don't bump it. So yeah, adjustment in these arms so that you can do their length and make sure the tyres are even down the car. And these uppers at the back have got the same adjustment on the wells as well, so you can flatten out your pinion angle otherwise it's gonna end up like that but yeah slow process especially when you're rebuilding the diffs at the same time and getting everything in but slowly coming together all right i got a question for you nick yeah these are being left loose yeah how come so when we come down to ride height where it rests we'll do them up because if we do them up droop we'll come down bush will be torn as soon as we come down yeah okay so all the suspension has to be done loose <laughs> Mate, that was in slow mo as well. So we'll we'll slow that we'll slow mo that down, and we'll get we'll get a bloody good shot out of that. So a big difference between what I put in the GU and what's going in the GQ is the radius arm. So on the GU, one, it's a super flex kit, so one, one is fixed and one is... <laughs> rattled the shed down. One is fixed and one is like a hyperflex arm that can actually move, but with this complete hyperflex kit, then both your radius arms can roll with the diff. So it basically gives you more um, yeah, movement off-road, more flex. But doesn't it, it allows the diff to roll like with this. it or something? So it basically gives you more flex off-road because it allows the diff to move more. Yeah. The issue with it is 
potentially doesn't drive as nice on road. I've heard mixed stories about that, so I'll have to wait and see. But the Super Flex is more like rated as, you know, still good for on road, on road, good for off road as well. Whereas the Hyper Flex kit is more your off road focused kit. So what's that going in now? Total. Just your toe. It's a steering arm, so you can steer. Extra heavy duty, cop spec. From and Molly 4130. And that's just so if you hit stuff with it, it don't break. Yeah, you unbend it. So these have a grease, uh, like a grease nipple on them. Bloody own. Yeah, is that just because they move on a ball joint? It's so that we can do regular maintenance and keep the ball and joint in good condition. Yeah. If you do not do that, you will avoid your wiring. How come the tie rod and drag link, well, they're not just a nut and bolt like a pan nut? Like, well, they got that funny nut and then you put the put the pin through them. Yeah, a castle nut. Yeah, so why? So they don't come undone. Because if they come undone and you kill someone, you go to jail. So that, they're just harder for that to come undone than a regular nut. Well, that, that's a nylock, and this is a castle nut, and this is a split. She going down. Down, down. The prices are down. Joins them up. So now when you steer in one side, the other side goes with it. See that? That's high, high clearance radius arm for this heavy duty, mate. Front's slowly coming together. We've got a steering dampener going now. It's when you hit a bump, so like your steering wheel doesn't jerk as much. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it dampens the impact. How's the diff rebuild going, Nick? Yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, it's getting it. So what are you up to now? So you got those fresh rotors on? Yeah, I'm about to put the brake calipers on. Stub axles are in, bearings are in. Not tension, but they're in. Yeah. Gotta wait to get the brakes on to uh, correctly tension them to specifications. And all those brakes are fully rebuilt, aren't they? Yeah, I put new, um, all the sweeties in there. Seals and pistons and slides. Cleaned out all the blade nipples. There's literally nothing that's not new on this front end. No. Like, well, I guess it's a second hand diff, but Oh. Everything, everything that can be new is new. Everything that's new. Every seal bearing part just about replaced. Mate, you better bloody watch out. Why? Because you you've got it covered. Yeah, you, I won't even need you anymore. That'll be right. I'll just do the rest myself. Do you know how much stress you'll be saving me? <laughs> Nick, Nick said to me, he said, if you don't put that steering down there and figure it out yourself, you don't deserve this car. Right, so I got it done. I already know you don't deserve it. So I got it done. Hey, that's the best the steering dampener I've ever seen. This what? isn't the Zach show, it's the Tyler Thompson show. I'm, I'm Trent from Punch Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Can I move your stuff? Now we know. So just doing all the brakes at the moment. There's some fresh, got them from all 4x4 spares as well. So they're the braided brake lines. Um, replace the normal ones. While Nick's doing the brakes down the front, gonna bring the back big diff in and start banging that together. few more things bolted on. Obviously there's a fair bit going on. I'm not exactly filming everything in detail, otherwise this video will be bloody ages long, but the front end's mostly done now, other than the sway bars. Front and rear sway bars still to go in. Um, but yeah, diff guards on both the front and rear diffs, just to protect those things. Diff guards always one of those things like, do you put them on and lose a bit of clearance, but protect your diff, or do you leave them off and gain clearance, but then you normally smash the bottom of your diff and if you hit it hard enough, you will break, break it. But yeah, I sort of I'd normally go with them. Coils in down the rear there. Uh, they have those little retainers on the bottom there so that hold them in. Panards in, shocks are in. Still got to mount the shocks using the remote res mounts. Probably won't get it done today, but we'll just do a few more things on it and then maybe try to finish it off tomorrow or something. Um, and then there's some things I'll have to come back and do, like it's got a GU steering box to go in it. So I have to come back and do that at some point. Wire up the lockers, a few things like that, but I'm going away in a couple of days to Newcastle. I've got to drive it down for the bar work, so 
We've sort of got to get it back on the road at least. That's the GU steering box there. That I got with the diffs. So yeah, at some point we'll pull the GQ one out and put the GU one in. Fit, eh? That's a neg 44, bro. Yeah, but the diff's going that way. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. That's <laughs> not actually how it'd sit. <laughs> well, I only put two on and then see how they sit. Wrong trip. Look at, look, at, look at that, it's in the guard. That's in line. Look, I think the pan aren't are all there way up. That's surely gonna scrub. They look like they're gonna have to yeah. trim those guards up. Them, them flares, you gotta trim the front off. And what, when you go up, you'll smash the back. We're just test fitting some 35s on it to see how it does fit. I don't have rims and tires for mine yet. They're still organizing them. So still working all the details out. I've got the rims coming, but haven't got the tires yet. But yeah, I'd say I'm gonna get some 35s for it. These, uh, these stick heaps fire out because they're neg 44. So we're sort of also looking at what offset I should go on mine. Neg 44 is massive. Yeah, and the pan hard needs adjusting. Sticking a bit further out on this side, isn't it? Yeah, still got just the pan hard. So pretty much finished for the day at the moment. Um, went to put both the sway bars in, but realized we're missing the brackets where they mount because they never came with my diff. So we're gonna have to get some of those to mount up the sway bars. Cause yeah, I'm gonna run both sway bars in, especially like with the Hyperflex kit and that. You sort of need that bit more on-road stability. But yeah, finish up. We still got like quite a bit to finish off here and there, but we got the main bulk of it in. It's all coming together, but pretty excited about it. The other thing to mention with this kit is, so I plan on getting this vehicle engineered, like once I get it together. When you are looking at suspension, like you sort of have to keep in mind whether it's gonna be road legal or whether you're gonna get it engineered. So normally on like a GQ, you can do a two inch lift, but I've gone the three inch. So this is a three inch Hyperflex kit. So because that bit bigger, because I'm going the, probably the 35s means I'll have to get it all engineered. Whereas you just go a more basic two inch 33s, keep it more simple. Just depends what you want to do in the car. Like for me, this is going to be more the uh, super hard track car. Alrighty, back down here a few days later. The boys have finished off a few more things with the suspension, sort of getting everything tidied up. So I'll run through what they have done. Firstly, everything was tightened down once it's on the ground, oil's put in the diffs, all those sorts of things. Tightened up the remote res brackets and mounts. And the back ones have been done too, so you can see the brackets there mounted onto the uh, side of the chassis there. Front and rear sway bars have been put in. So here's your rear one, they're disconnects. So you pull this pin out and you just sort of need to like tie it up out of the way when you're going off road and then you'll have your sway bars out for a bit more flex. And same once again with the front ones here, sway bars in, disconnectable. Obviously a legal requirement when you are on the roads having your front and rear sway bars in and especially with the bigger lift kits like this, you really want both sway bars in or they're not gonna handle the best on the road. With these Superior Superflex ones, they're the same ones I had in the GU and they're the same ones that easily passed engineering, as I've said, so I'm sort of setting it all up for engineering. And to be honest, they flex really well off-road as is. You don't need to disconnect them. You do, you, I probably will get a bit more out of this suspension setup when I do disconnect because I've got the Hyperflex arms and the really long shocks. But you just leave them in most of the time and they work really well. Hubs on the front, they are the manual GQ one. I still need to put the hub saving rings on. I've got them coming, so I'll put them on next time. The GQ hubs are meant to be the sort of strongest of the patrol hubs. They're the genuine Nissan ones. And once you put the ring savers on them, then it gives them that bit more strength to stop them normally cracking. I actually had to order off Superior, uh, let me line that up a bit, some new uh, mounts here for the diffs because my diffs never came with them, so I got them. Trying to remember now what we already went through and what we didn't. My memory's a bit uh, slow, bad, I guess. I forgot what everything I said a few days ago. But yeah, all the brakes are done. Fully fresh rebuilds, brakes, diffs, suspension. It's all there. So we got the Bendix discs and pads in there. 
these brakes are fully rebuilt and then we'll just put the breathers in temporarily they have to be properly wired up but just for the moment so i can drive it they're just going like up into the back of the chassis there somewhere super stoked with how it's all starting to come together and look though it looks so good under here it's a shame i'm gonna destroy it all this fresh black and shiny metal parts and everything so i'm gonna finish up this video here because that's sort of all the suspension installed but there's still quite a bit to go so i've booked in for another day in a couple of weeks because just the boys are pretty busy here booked in for another day and we're going to come back and do a heap more stuff so next time when we come back we still got to do the gu steering box on the front i ordered some new bump stops because those ones were broken we just had to put the big spaces in so i've ordered some proper bump stops for the front and I've got wheels and tyres coming because obviously she's looking a bit funny now on this setup. So I've got some really nice uh, yeah, tyres and rims coming. Still got to wire up the lockers and properly do all these breathers up into a little like four port dock uh, in the engine. It's probably another full day nearly by the time you tidy everything up, do those bits and pieces, rims, tyres, get all that done. And then after it comes out of that, it's really going to be looking awesome. say so, yeah yeah that's right we've got uh, body suspension galore here yeah yeah I'll, I'll be in in a sec I'm just uh, filming a little vlog so yeah bolt that on and you'll be able to sit there obviously being a legal requirement for on the roads having your front and 